Good morning and welcome to worship on Whit Sunday. Um, when's the last time you heard it called that? This is Pentecost Sunday and we're glad that you're with us to worship this morning. Before we begin our worship, I'll ask Karen to share with us some announcements. Thank you for joining us this morning and uh, wearing red. We look pretty good in red, don't you think? Um, if you need to visit the church, remember to continue to wear your mask. It's still required for everyone's protection. Um, our community connection call is on Tuesday at two o'clock. You can find the information on our church website and join us on Zoom. Uh, you're invited to join our last session for our, our adult education on Wednesday at 10 o'clock in the morning. It's our final session on the Franciscan Way, and it's been just a, a really wonderful, meaningful um, approach to the to Franciscan Christianity. Joy is this week. Today is Nancy Sampson's birthday. Happy birthday, Nancy. It's also Jim Minty's birthday, and Thursday is Richard's birthday. So I wish them all a happy birthday. Next Sunday is Trinity Sunday. And if you want to wear liturgical colors next week, wear white. Um, for those of you using Zoom, you can go on the online, the chat button, and write your request, and we'll do our best to include them in the prayers of intercession. And please remember to continue making your tithes and author offering either in, in your envelope and mailing it in or on the church website. You can do that very easily at our church website. And that's www.gdlclb.org. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Karen. Let's prepare our hearts for worship with our thanksgiving for baptism. <clears throat> Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for the waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Let's join in singing our gathering hymn, O Holy Spirit, Root of Life.
The prayer of the day, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading this morning is from Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinew on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them, and the skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore I prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Word of wisdom, word of life. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Acts 2, beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them. 
men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before coming to the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of wisdom, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter, beginning at the 26th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I'm going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my Redeemer and my Rock. Amen. When you think of all the things the disciples of Jesus saw and experienced in their three or so years with him, exorcisms, healings, calming of storms, raising people from the dead, and then his own crucifixion and resurrection, it's a wonder they didn't become unhinged. Maybe they did a little. I think it's safe to say that conspiring with Jesus had fundamentally changed their understanding of reality. They had seen things. The book of Acts tells us that Jesus stayed with his disciples for another 40 days after his resurrection, teaching them about the kingdom of God. He told them to stay in Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. John baptized with water, he said, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And it was while he was saying all this, he was lifted up and a cloud took him from their sight. I wonder if they had any clue what was going to happen next. Things were about to get even stranger. On the sixth day of Sivan, seven weeks and one day after the Feast of Unleavened Bread, on the day of Shavuot, which the Hellenized Jews called Pentecosta, the streets of Jerusalem were filled with people from every tribe and nation, 
from the far reaches of the empire and beyond, some even from Kush, Iberia, and Ethiopia, from Scythia and the Parthian Empire, Jews and proselytes, curious Gentiles and ambitious traders had come from everywhere to be in the holy city for the festival of the first fruits of spring and to remember when God gave the Torah to Moses. The followers of Jesus were there too. They'd stayed all together in one place, in one room, waiting as Jesus had instructed, waiting for a signal, praying for something to happen. Suddenly the house was filled with a sound like a hurricane. It filled the house and drove them to their feet while something that looked like tongues of fire danced between them until a flame seemed to alight on the head of each one of them. They felt a presence swell up inside them and knew it was the Holy Spirit. They poured out into the street where they began to speak to the crowd in languages they'd never learned the Spirit speaking through them, proclaiming the love and grace of God as it had been made to them, made known to them in Jesus the Christ. They spoke of God's works of power through Jesus, his feeding of multitudes, his healings, his teaching. They spoke of how he welcomed strangers and touched lepers. They spoke of how he challenged the self-righteous and embraced the neglected. On the day of Shavuot, the festival of harvest, which is also called Pentecost, the day on which Moses had been given the law, the Holy Spirit began to spread the good news of the reign of God through Jesus, the Christ, across the empire of Caesar and beyond. That day, that Pentecost, was the birthday of the church. We sometimes think of it as the day that the Holy Spirit entered the story, but the Spirit had been part of the story from the very beginning. When Jesus was baptized, the Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. That's why the Spirit is usually depicted as a dove. In Celtic Christianity, though, the Spirit is often portrayed as a wild goose. When you think about a dove, you think of something graceful and gentle and sweet. It's easy to ignore a dove. Their cooing is soft and quiet. It can lull you to sleep. A wild goose, on the other hand, is a different bird altogether. Geese are loud and intrusive. They can be downright aggressive. A goose will wake you right up. There's no complacency with a wild goose. If a goose wants you to move, it will find a way to move you. A wild goose isn't safe or tame, and neither is the Holy Spirit. If the Spirit wants you to move, she will find a way to move you. The Holy Spirit is sometimes depicted as fire. The apostles experienced tongues of fire, filling the room, then resting on them. The prophet Jeremiah said that when he tried to be silent, the unspoken word of God, inspired by the Spirit, is like a fire shut up in my bones. John the Baptist had told people, I baptize you with water, but the one who's coming will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. In 2 Timothy 1, we read, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. The spirit is sometimes understood as wind or breath. The Hebrew word for spirit, ruach, also means breath or wind. It's the same with the Greek word for spirit, pneuma. It also means wind or breath. In the Genesis story of creation, it's the ruach of God, the breath of God or wind of God, the spirit that hovers over the waters, bringing order out of chaos. When the prophet Ezekiel had a vision of a valley full of dead and dry bones, it was the ruach, breath of God, that filled those bones with life. In the Gospel of John, the resurrected Jesus surprised the disciples in the locked room where they were hiding then breathed on them, pneuma, 
and said, receive the Holy Spirit. The Spirit inspires us to envision God's reign on earth as it is in heaven and energizes us to work to make that transformation a reality. The Spirit inspires our imaginations. She gives us visions and dreams of the better world that God is calling us to build. Our word, inspire, comes from the Latin word spirare, to breathe. We breathe in the Holy Spirit, acknowledging that the life and power of God are in the very air we breathe. We breathe in and call it inspiration. When we die, we expire, ex, out of, spirare, breath. We give up our breath, our spirit. And in all of this, in all our life of faith, we are called to conspire with God. Conspire, conspire, conspirare, to breathe with. The Holy Spirit invites us to breathe as one with God, to change our understanding of reality, to learn to see the world through God's eyes and love the world with God's heart, to bless the world with God's presence flowing through us. It's by the Holy Spirit that we can say that Christ is in us and that we are in Christ. It is the Holy Spirit who opens our hearts and opens our eyes to the presence of Christ in, with, and under everything. It is the Holy Spirit who guides us to the future that God has envisioned for us. When we conspire with God, the Spirit takes root in our lives to produce the fruit that builds and sustains community. Love inspires us to invite and welcome others, to create a safe place and a place of comfort for them. Goodness makes us trustworthy and moves us to treat others well. Peace creates openness so that we can know each other more deeply. Faithfulness ensures that we are deeply loyal to God and the Spirit's calling. Gentleness shows that we care for God's creation that we will treat each other and animals and creation itself with care and respect. Joy keeps us from sinking into cynicism or bitterness. It keeps our hope alive and flourishing. Joy is a testimony to the presence of God within us and to our participation in the life of God. Kindness shows that we understand that we are all of the same kind created in the likeness and image of God, and that sometimes we all need a little help, some understanding, grace, and love. Patience is the inspired virtue that shows us that we understand that we are all learning and growing at a different pace, and that life is teaching us different lessons. Self-control means that with the Spirit's help, I keep a rein in, I keep a rein on both my appetites and my temper. It means I keep track of how well I'm doing at bringing love, goodness, peace, faithfulness, gentleness, joy, kindness, and patience, the fruit of the Spirit, into the world around me. We say sometimes, I've said it myself, that the church needs a new Pentecost, another outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I think what we really need, though, is to revisit the ways that the Spirit is still alive and moving in our midst, and to open ourselves more fully to the wind and the fire. We've been happy with the quiet cooing of the dove. It has sustained us. I think, though, that it's time to wake up the wild goose. It's time to rekindle the fire. Simeon, the new theologian writing in the late 10th century or early 11th century said, when you light a flame from a flame, it's the same flame that you receive. We've received that flame of the Spirit down through the centuries as it passed from one to another of us in our baptism. That flame goes all the way back to the apostles. It's the same flame that danced on their heads on that day of Shavuot so long ago. It's been waiting to dance on our heads and in our hearts. She's been waiting to change our understanding of reality. She's been waiting for us 
to conspire with God. Let us pray. Growing in faith, lifted by hope, guided by love and alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. We bring our prayers before God who has promised to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Holy God, you come to us as the Holy Spirit, filling your people with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and our dreaming that we may discover your creative work anew and be refreshed and empowered by the power of the Spirit within us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. God of life, your amazing works are too numerous to count. The earth is full of your creatures, living things both great and small. You open your hands to give them the necessities of life. Teach us respect for all the ways your life has taken form in this world. Send out your spirit to renew the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages heard together the good news of your love made manifest in Jesus and the invitation to join the way of peace. Fill the leaders of the nations with your Holy Spirit so that they act with grace, wisdom, and compassion for the good of all people. Bring us peace, Lord. We pray especially this day for peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of love, fill glory a day with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries and help us make new and lasting connections with our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, Your mercy is, is great. great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the size of our hearts when words fail, when words fail us. <clears throat> hear, those cry, hear those who cry out to you in distress and restore to wholeness all who are in need this day. We pray especially for Lance Hailstone, Matthew Erickson, Harry Plummer, Baby Arthur, Peggy Bachman, Marilyn Biddle, Charlie Hartwell, Mike Engel, Janet Sims, Vicki Gammer, Jim Shoup, Diane Kyle, Judy Mello, Dee Peretta, Renee Wright, Chuck Dean, Brooklyn and her family, and for Lynn Hicks, and for all those on the prayer wall. Reveal your power to heal and to save. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, by the power of the Spirit, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's join in singing our sending song, The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve.
May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine on us and may the Lord be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and descend on us with the Holy Spirit, the wild goose of the Spirit. And as we go out into the world, empowered and aflame, may we know peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve each other, to love and serve your neighbors, to pass the flame of faith from yourself to others, to share the peace of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.